Hey ho, good neighbors. Today we are going to go over how to center serve your bow, tie in knocking points with nail knots, uh, figure out your, your knock height when you tie those in, uh, tie in a clicker as well. So we've got kind of a, an array of different parts, pieces, and tools in front of me. You don't need all of this, but um, I just grabbed a bunch of stuff this morning. But we've got uh, two. These are both identical bows. This is the Black Widow PSA, 62 inches long. Um, this is my primary, this is my backup. This string here is uh, broken in now. It's what I had up in BC. I'm gonna take it off, use it as a backup string. This is a mountain muffler bow string. I highly suggest them. We're gonna pop this on. It has no center serving on it. I'll go over how to do all of that. All right, so now I've got my new string on, no center serving. And then uh, I'm not an expert by any means, but I always, uh, when I put my new string on, I always set my brace height up since it hasn't stretched in at all a little bit higher than uh, what I want it to end up at. I shoot this uh, string about eight and seven eighths. I got it set up right now about nine and an eighth. With the mountain muffler bow strings, they generally don't, after you shoot them a few times, they're pretty much set. They're, they're not too bad to deal with. So when I'm figuring out my knock height to get my, well, I've never done this backwards before, to get my center serving on and my, uh, or not my knock height, when I want to figure out my height from my center serving, I'll pop this on and I just drop it roughly in line of where I'm going to end up anyway. So meaning like right now, this point right here is the bottom of my shelf. And then I'm usually, oh, five eighths heavy uh, knock height. This doesn't have to be precise. So, you know, right in here is five eighths heavy top of my finger. So what I'm going to do, work with me a little, bear with me. I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm going to mark this just above the top of that. So I know I want my serving to start there. Now I try to keep my servings pretty short, uh, both compound and traditional bows. So I know the bottom of this is going to be give me plenty of room for my finger tab for shooting three under. So I just mark the very bottom of that. Now I've got my distance correct for my center serving. Pop this off. I'm gonna start serving, we'll go over that in a second. So right here's my serving tool or, or one of them. Um, and then I've got 25 thousandths thick or 0.25 uh, power grip on this one. Now you can't just blanket by 25 thousandths or 32 or whatever size uh, serving you actually, you're going to have to figure out which knock you have, uh, how many strands your string is or whatever, and then figure out uh, what size you need on how easy that knock's going to snap on. Um, so for me with the mountain muffler, this is 8125X material. I can't remember how many strands it is. I think it's 16, I think. Um, I've got 25 thousandths. Um, so power grip, I really like it. I use it for just about everything. Uh, this is the center serving right here. Uh, this right here is 21 thousandths. I use that for my knock points when I tie my, tie my nail knot. Um, it's handy to have a bunch of different types of material. I've had great luck both with B BCY and Brownell, but I do like the power grip more than anything. So, all right, now we're going to start the serving. One of the things you want to make sure of when you serve this is that you follow the rotation of the string with the rotation of the server. In this case, this string is running this way. So I want to make sure as I'm serving this and, and running my serving that I am running it in this case would be counterclockwise. So either way, take like a length of the material of the serving material. And I just run it down the string, I don't know, three inches. And then I'll manually wrap that over itself and usually I go like 10 times or so. I also usually have a bow stand but uh, this will work. So right now I'm just wrapping it over so as I pull this later on it's going to tighten everything down on itself. All 
right, that should be enough. I think Frank, are you zoomed in on that? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna just slide this up right to where my Sharpie mark is. I'm actually gonna put a couple more in there. And getting this, in my opinion, getting this as tight as you can from this first knot through your serving to when I back serve it is vitally important. So now I've got that wrapped about as many times as I want. There's a couple different ways that you can do this. You can take pliers and just clamp it and reef on it, but sometimes that'll break your serving. Um, I think Carbon Express makes a really good uh, knock plier set you can wrap around. If you're in the field or if you have Allen wrenches so you don't cut your finger with this, a lot of times I'll just wrap it over itself a few times and then I can use that just to really reef on it and that's getting super tight as I do that. Um, and then once I get it about as tight as I want, I take my trusty Tito knife leave a little bit of a tail, not a whole lot, and just cut her loose. And then I'll loosen up my server, get her lined up here. And I'm gonna get that pretty tight. And then I tighten the living crap out of my serving tool when I do this, because I want that serving to be as tight as possible. And then I just grab onto this string as tight as I can, and uh, the server does the rest. Can you see that pretty well? Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to serve this all the way down to this Sharpie mark, and I'll back serve it. I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and then go over the back serving portion. One thing I want to mention as you're checking, you obviously don't want to serve all of this and not know if your knock snap on. So if you're just checking as far as for circumference or diameter of the uh, serving material according to your knock, just serve a little bit of it. I shoot two types of um, arrows right now. This is a grizzly stick and this is a bonding knock. So I just kind of pre-snap it, make sure it's not too tight or too loose. So I'm good to go there. You get it too tight, uh, you get inconsistent arrow flight. If it's too loose, it'll fall off when you're at full draw. So both of those are just about perfect for me. So make sure you do check that before you try to do all of this and then find out it doesn't work. All right, so now I've got it served all the way down. I'm just about to the Sharpie mark. Uh, and this knot is the most important one and definitely uh, something you can use for more than just your center serving, but it's when you back serve. Um, some people will run a string all the way underneath the serving. Once they serve over the top, they'll put the end loop in there and then pull it through. That probably doesn't make much sense, but that can cause inconsistent um, knocks, uh, I guess snapping the knock um, on that center serving. So you don't want to do that, just back serve it. So I'm winding this counterclockwise. So what I'm going to do is I've got my center serving on this side of my string. And I've got my serving, my serving tool over here. I'm going to make a big loop and I'm going to run this inside of itself multiple times. Usually I try to do eight or nine. Anybody counting? Is that eight or nine? There's no mistakes, only happy accidents. All right, now that I've got that wrapped through there, or wrapped around through there, give me a little slack. I'm gonna take that standing end, run it over the top of my center serving. And as I'm unwrapping the one side, I'm wrapping it back onto the top of that. Hopefully the video explains it better than my way I'm explaining it verbally. So it's magic. As I'm wrapping that up, these other ones are going away. Now I've just got a big loop. Pull that tight. And as I reef on that to pull it, when I pull that tight, that basically just wraps tighter and tighter and tighter and squishes up against that center serving. So I'm going to cut this off, leave a little slack. I'll take my Allen wrench so it doesn't hurt my finger.
those Carbon Express knock pliers do work better. And I'm just going to reef on this pretty much with everything I've got. And then we're good to go. It, usually I'll pull on that tight enough like it just did. It'll break off right at that tie-in point. I've got a little bit here to burn, so I'll just take a lighter. Burn that. I don't have a whole lot to burn here. Now I've got my center serving. Now we're going to go on to tying in the nail knots and the knock points. All right, now we're going to tie in, tie in my knocking points with nail knots. So I'm just going to take a couple lengths of this. I don't know, foot long. And then I'm also going to need this, which this is kind of, it's called a nail knot because you would, uh, you would tie the knot over a nail. Um, I don't use that. It's just basically a surgeon's knot right here and a length of, uh, of serving. Um, I cannot claim doing that, figuring this out. I learned this from Rocky Mountain Specialty Gear. So that'll get laid on top. And then I'll show you how to tie the nail knot. And that, all that's used is just to pull the tag in through the knot. So uh, we'll zoom in down on this and I'll get two of them tied in here. Okay, so I've got my nail knot apparatus. Lay that on top of here. So have a little bit overhanging end right here over the top of that. And then uh, you want to do this six or eight times. So I'm just wrapping around my nail knot apparatus. A few times. And then what I'm going to do is the uh, portion of this serving material I was just wrapping around, the end of that, I'm going to run into this tag loop here. And then I pull that through and I magically have a nail knot now. So that's going to be my top knocking point right there. I'm going to leave this loose so I have room for adjustment. Just snug it up so it doesn't uh, slide around. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. Just repeat it identically for my bottom. Uh, get that snugged up and then we'll go over how to uh, pull those in and get your uh, knock point uh, adjusted and ready to go. Okay, so when you're figuring out the knock height, generally, like I shoot three fingers under, uh, I usually ask the bullier to make it just an even tiller. So from here to the string, both top and bottom, I run an even tiller. And shooting three under, I'm generally five eighths to three quarters knock high when I tie these in. Uh, with this specific bow on the two other two backup strings I've got, it was 11 sixteenths, uh, which would get me, you know, perfect as far as bear shaft and broadheads. It couldn't, it's different on different bows, or it has been for me. But in this case, I'm going to set this up at 11 sixteenths knock height. And I'll flip this around so you can see. I'm just going to slide this down to where it's barely touching my shelf. And since I can't see that, I'm assuming that's barely touching. I've got my little dimensions right here going up and I'll just slide this down until that lines up with 11 sixteenths on here. I'll reef that one tight. I'll get, oh, about a quarter inch gap between the top and the bottom knock point. I'll reef that one down. Once I've got both of them tight, um, I'll usually shoot through paper or bear shaft, make sure they're good to go. I don't need to move them. I'll put drops of glue and kind of rub it in with my fingers on the top and bottom, and I'm set. Um, pretty simple. I don't do anything other than that. Uh, I also use these knots for tying in multiple of other different things, like when I the clicker, and we're going to do that video here in a minute. So I'm going to pop this off, get them lined up, tighten up, and you'll be able to see the finished product. All right, so I've got this snugged up real tight, 11 sixteenths. Um, this is not the best way to do this because sometimes it'll cut and you won't be able to get it as tight as maybe you want to, um, but it's what I'm gonna do right now. And I just pull evenly on these and it really reefs the crap out of it down. And uh, go to the next one, do the same thing. Make sure you get that gap in there so you don't get any knock pinch. 
brief this one down. Okay. Just cut these off pretty tight to the, uh, the actual nail nut. Now again, normally um, what I'll do is go shoot these through paper, um, bare shaft tune them, whatever your preference is or both. Once I get the once I get to a point where I know I'm in good shape, I'll put a dot. I'll put a dot of glue on each one of these, kind of rub it around with my finger, and call it good. That's all I've got to do.